Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Raju Padhe from Simej College, Patna. Right now, I am going to discuss with the block diagram of a computer. We will understand the basic concept of block diagram of a computer. So, as you people are seeing out here, we are having a block diagram of a computer. Through this, we will try to understand how the computers are going to work. So, as we know, every computer works on the basis of IPO cycle that is called input, process, and output. So, you can notice out here from this end, this is the input. So, every computer need to gather the data. In order to gather the data inside the computer system, we require input device. As an input device, we can have keyboard or we can have mouse or we can have a scanner. So with the help of either any of the input device, we take the input from the user and we pass that input to the central processing unit. So inside a central processing unit, we are having two important component like control unit as well as arithmetic and logic unit. So this arithmetic logic unit is responsible for performing arithmetical operation like uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, as well as there is a second part of ELU that is called logical unit. So logical unit is basically responsible for doing the logical work. Like it can do the end logical work or logical work or it can perform any other kind of logical work like greater than, less than, equal to and other kind of logical work. So basically this uh, arithmetic logic unit and control unit is working in synchronization mode. So the job of the control unit as a name suggests, this is the kind of a controller. So basically it gives the instructions how to perform the task. And it is going to prioritize all the tasks given by the memory unit to the entire CPU. So all tasks are getting prioritized and based on the prioritizing, their schedule is getting maintained and as per the schedule, the task is happening one after another. And very importantly, this memory unit is going to play a very, very important role out here. So whenever any user takes the input, from their input device. So input taken by the user is getting converted to machine readable form that is called in binary digit. And that binary digit is getting converted and it is getting stored in the memory unit. And whenever any data is required by the CPU, so that data is being supplied by the memory unit to the CPU and data is being processed by ALU and managed by control unit and after processing the data whatever process data we are getting the output of that or result of that particular data process data is getting stored back inside the memory unit let us discuss in detail what are the memory units inside the memory units we are having a two different kind of memory units first is primary memory and second is a secondary memory inside every computer system we are having RAM as a primary storage or primary unit of memory. So whatever output we are going to get after processing, that output is getting stored on the primary memory unit that is called on RAM. But the RAM is volatile in nature. So whenever any power outage happens or accidentally my system is getting off, data will not be available there. So in order to make our data permanent, we need to have additional memory that is called secondary memory and as as a secondary memory we can make use of make use of hard disk which is attached to our system so whenever we store the data inside the system inside the hard disk that data is getting preserved for longer duration so whenever we require the data again we can get the data back from the secondary memory and we can load it in, inside the primary memory and we can work with that data again 
once every task is getting finished by this entire process of cpu the data has to be resulted to the user that means the output should be given to the user see in order to get the output all the to the user we are having certain output devices so as a output devices we can have our video that is called visual display unit on that we can get the output so but that output is going to be called as soft output but if you wanted to get the hard output so after processing the data if your print device is attached to your system so automatically the output will be printed on print paper and that kind of output can be called as hard output so that's all thank you very much for watching this video and do subscribe and like this particular video again i'll come with the next video next interesting video on different topic thank you very much